Hi everybody and welcome back. Thank you for being here. Okay, in my previous short video I laid the foundation for what I want to talk about in this video. If there is one thing all of us should agree on, then it is that Harry and Meghan, Prince Charles and to be fair many of the other members of the royal family like Andrew etc are causing division or shall I say their deeds and actions are causing division particularly over the last four to five years. In the past during royal weddings and other celebrations even recently during the Jubilee celebration we saw the people of Britain and other countries come together and celebrate the royal family and Her Majesty the Queen. For a day or more or even weeks, most people are joined in the preparations for the events, either then attending or taking part or being glued in front of laptops and TVs to watch and share in the events. And then for days after, we are all talking about it. For as long as I can remember, the concept of the monarchy and the royal family was to unite and not divide. The idea, in my opinion, however, had everything to do with loyalty and respect and of giving and receiving. Now, however, we are faced with a multidimensional dilemma. Our hearts and minds want or crave that sense of belonging, of being part of something a little bigger than us. But suddenly, our security blanket, our pacifier, has holes in it and the edges are fraying. Suddenly, a Z-list actress had stepped into the fold and had shown us that one can be richly compensated for being disloyal and disrespectful. She had brought the idea of selfishness, of receiving, receiving, receiving without giving into the modern royal household. And with a few woke catchphrases, had divided people who would likely otherwise have been friends or at least good neighbours. We saw a much-loved prince go rogue and showed disloyalty and disrespect to his family, to his country, to the law and order and even the military of his country. But you see, in a way, we can dismiss these two, the Harkle couple, when it suits us because they have no real power. The only power they have is what we allow them to have. Now just think about it. If we don't watch or listen to material they put out, we do not buy publications they are on the cover of and very much ignore their existence these two will lose more than 50% of their already diminished popularity and obviously power. However, Harry and Meghan can be dismissed and ignored. It is truly our choice. But unfortunately, the same does not apply to others. As the future king, Prince Charles, holds immense power, whether we ignore him or not, and the same applies to most of our politicians and other leaders, the mega rich and the powerful. Over a period of time, I have read through transcripts of the World Economic Forum Global Reset Summit presentations, and folks, our answers are not in what Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum put on their website, but in the presentations given at these summits. To give you a clue, we are talking about things like transhumanism and AI, human population planning and mechanization. And of course, 
the favorite excuse for everything, namely climate change. I spent some time looking into George Soros's Open Society Foundations. Now, please note that in 1992, Soros shorted the British pound and at the same time made a profit of approximately $1 million. He became known as the man who broke the Bank of England. Soros had also been a vocal critic of Donald Trump and the Chinese president, Xi Jinping. Not to make any of you depressed, but we have an ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. We have a threat of war between China, Taiwan, even the United States. We have just come out of a pandemic and lockdowns. We have socio-economic problems resulting from all of this. We have internal conflicts in our own countries. And amidst all of this, somewhere in the back of our minds, we value or hope for the fantasy that, for instance, the monarchy can provide. We crave it, but alas, it no longer carries that mantle of fantasy and mystery and silent strength. And unfortunately, it is not only because of Harry and Meghan, or not only because of Prince Andrew, or whoever you get to blame this month. No, in my opinion, it has everything to do with trust or the lack thereof. Now, whether you are American, British, or South African, or whatever, if you are honest with yourself, do you currently trust your leadership? Most likely, you don't, at least not 100%. But we are not here to talk politics. We are here to talk about the British royals. And so I will, before I get yawn emojis in my comment section again today. <laughs> we have, or I have, spoken at length about Prince Charles's charities, foundations, and trusts, and that in itself for a man in his position is truly nothing out of the ordinary. However, it is now proven on almost a weekly basis that Prince Charles and his trust and his foundation is willing to do deals with the devil himself to get the money and the wealth to feed those trusts and foundations. In the last week or so, it has come out, yes, again, we see and hear that the Prince's foundation received three hundred thousand pounds cash from a charity belonging to Moshi Kantor in 2020, despite the billionaire having been named on a Putin list released by the United States Treasury in 2018. Although Mr. Kantor had been forging ties with Putin, he still funneled millions into British institutions, including a pledge of three million pounds to the Prince's Foundation. Mr. Cantor paid the first instalment worth 300,000 to the Foundation in 2019. And again, Clarence House issued a statement saying that the Prince of Wales's Foundation's trustees accepted the donation without the prince's involvement. Oh, shame. Bullshit. Again, uh, we have reports and photographs dating back to early 2020 to prove otherwise. And I personally am so tired of being taken for a fool, of being lied to, of these people underestimating our intelligence or 
having so little respect for us that they think that just by them saying so, we have to believe them. Never mind, I digress. So here we are, a prince of the realm, a future king, who do not only disrespect the government of their biggest ally, namely the United States, but also does not respect the people of his own country and the Commonwealth. Now, in my last few videos, the ones some of you found a little boring, I spoke to you about Yulia Payevska, the Ukrainian woman, and I spoke to you about the planned mirrored city of which only the first phase alone will cost billions and billions of dollars. And I did this for a very good reason, because today we are going to add up these incidents and all these things, and we're going to add it together and draw a probable conclusion. Now, let's start with Harry and Meghan. Why are they continuing to fly via private jet regardless of the backlash they are getting? Why are they so hell-bent on getting their IPP, or then Internationally Protected Persons, status back? And how can they afford it? Well, guys, some of you actually picked up on the hints and came up with your own suggestions, which is incidentally very, very, very close to what I'm starting to think and feel. Imagine wanting to smuggle a microchip or memory card with rather sensitive information from one country or one town or one city to another. Would you give it to a bloke flying commercial or would you give it to a bloke flying private? I would guess that it would be safer with a guy leaving from a private airport in a private jet. Now, increase that so-called security by giving someone IPP status, which will then provide the same kind of protection and security when he or she travels internationally. Yes, my dears, we see these VIPs or IPPs arrive with their security being huddled through customs, their luggage being taken off their plane and straight to their cars, blah, blah, blah. I have seen it and maybe so have you. Anyway, moving on. I send an email out making inquiries about Harry and Meghan's visit to the United Nations during Mandela Day. And although I have not received any specific confirmation, I also have not received any denials. So, I am now at a point where I am going to accept and believe that it is true that the South African government, via our United Nations ambassador, paid for Harry and Meghan's private flight from Santa Barbara to New York and possibly also paid for the accommodation and even possibly paid them an appearance fee. Now, come on, guys. Don't be naive. Why would an ANC government pay a white British ex-royal to attend a Mandela Day celebration at the United Nations? Why would Invictus or Harry or Netflix be so desperate to get Yulia Bayevska or her daughter neither of whom qualifies as a disabled veteran to the games in The Hague. Come on, guys. I'm not psychic or delusional. <laughs> I'm just putting one 
plus two, plus three, plus four together. And the 10 I'm getting is not a perfect one. I'm sorry. Now forget about the millions of dollars or pounds handed over in shopping bags or cash to Prince Charles or his foundations or his charities, but concentrate rather on who it was coming from. Go do your own research and see how many times Black Rock Inc. is mentioned in the credits of royal charities, trusts and foundations. BlackRock Inc., the biggest investment or money management firm in the entire world. A firm of which George Soros at one time owned approximately 58% shares. He has since sold and bought shares again in BlackRock. But the last statement of sales and purchases dates back to mid-2021. So I can't tell you exactly how many shares in BlackRock he owns currently. However, go look how many shares JP Morgan owns in BlackRock. Go look how BlackRock, Vanguard and JP Morgan invest in one another. I know that. I saw that. And if you go to a little trouble, so can you. Now, according to the most recent records, the Vanguard Group is currently the largest shareholder in BlackRock. And the very same BlackRock was criticized by the very same Mr. George Soros for leading the race to invest in da -da, China. And this happened in September 2021 and very publicly. China, as we know, is an ally of Russia, as are India, Turkey, Pakistan, Syria, Belarus, and many others. But guess what, guys? Go Google Russian and Saudi Arabian ties and you will see that Saudi Arabia has sided with Russia in terms of oil, etc. over the US and others many, many, many times. And most recently in March 2022. Now, once you have done that, then go back and reread where and with whom Prince Charles's trust and foundation donation scandals are from or with, yes, Russians and Saudis. Ladies and gentlemen, I now rest my case in terms of Prince Charles and his multi-million dollar deals. Now, I'm not British. I can't petition the British government for clarity. I cannot force your charity commission to reverse the decision not to investigate Charles and force it, but you, my British subscribers, can. I'm not saying you have to either. If you are prepared to or happy with your future king doing these deals, then it is up to you. The same applies to Harry and Meghan. I'm not an American citizen either. I cannot petition your government either. But I am purely bringing you readily available information and, of course, my interpretation of it. What you do with that information is entirely up to you. If the FBI, CIA and IRS are not interested in looking into Harry and Meghan's numerous dealings with Russian oligarchs or where they are getting their funds from, then there's absolutely nothing I can do. In my opinion, however, we have indeed been missing the point behind all of this. It was easier to look 
at the surface and say it was Megan's desire for fame causing all of this. And yes, it may be up to a certain point, but I have been saying this for a while now, that she is not that important or important enough or powerful enough to pull all these strings. But her father-in-law is, and he has the connections, not them. And guys, no, I do not personally think Charles or Harry or Meghan are spies or want to overthrow governments or fund wars or anything like that. No, no, no. I think they are dumb and greedy and are being used because of their lack of intelligence and greed. Again, I must make it clear in my opinion. And I may be wrong, but I do not think so. Or shall I not mention the Harkles upcoming award for their support of Afghan refugees. Okay, okay, thank you. I won't. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it from me for today. I'm going to, after this, put up a short bonus video just with some frivolous, funny, nice information. So, until I meet you on the next one, take good care of yourselves. Bye.